Hello everyone, welcome back to Marion's World. I've got a nice piece of stitching coming up for you with two new stitches to learn and I hope you enjoy it. It didn't end up quite the way I was expecting when I started. I hope you enjoy it. I have two stitches I'm going to be introducing today are couching and French knots. And couching is very easy once you just get into the hang of how you're doing it. French knots, I do hear that people find difficulty with them, but really there's only one big rule for French knots and there'll be a good chance to practice here in the middle. Couching just means that you're going to lay one piece of fibre or fabric, could be fabric either, on top of your base and then little stitches will catch it down without going through it. So the, the piece that you're applying stays um, not sewn at all, but the stitches that go over it are what keeps it onto your base fabric. So I nearly did use this piece of ripped up sheet um, and I was just going to put that around the edge and then my eye caught this funny bit of yarn and I've decided to use that instead. So I've just got a bit of cruel wool in my needle. I've got a sharp point and a big eye. I've come up in the corner and I've got my little piece of denim tacked down with just pieces of thread from my tangle. Uh, the tacking stitches will come out at the end of the visible. And I thought I'd just put the denim on because it matches what I've done before up here. So to do couching, I'm going to lay that going to turn it round so it's like that way round. I'm going to lay this yarn on top exactly where I want it to be. I'll just leave that tail there till the end. I've come up in the corner and I'm just going to take a little stitch and go straight back down over the top of it and pull that down. Now you could use a contrasting thread and make these stitches more visible but I've decided that the yarn is so pretty I'd rather the yarn was the thing that's visible and so I'm not I have chosen a neutral um, couching thread I'm just going to get that little tail out of the way because it's annoying me right so when you're couching something down, you don't want it to be wibbly wobbling about. So there's no point in doing a, a, a stitch miles away. So I'm going to come up on the line that I want the couching to be, which is straight. And I've come up about a centimetre away. And I'll go down straight over the top of it again. Now you can go... On the same side so I could go over and come up on this side and go over and and keep going like steps but I can go whichever way and I'm just going to come up on the same side every time about a centimeter and straight over and I'm just going to make sure all the time that my yarn is lying where I want. So you can see that you, I could put this yarn in any shape I wanted. If I wanted to do a circle or a curve, I can just lay the yarn wherever I want, bring the needle up and tack it down and tack it down. I could do, I could definitely do that. I could tack that down and I could take this thread for a walk and just tack it wherever it came. This, this, you know, I mean, I could, you could do that and just let it lie and then couch it down exactly where it lay. And that's a way of just doing something free form and just letting the, letting the couched fibre show you what it wants to do. But for me today, I want to do a perimeter. So I'm just going to keep holding that, that yarn out and coming up another centimeter all the time on the line and if you want to draw the line to keep to it just do that it's it's fine but my stitches shouldn't be that visible because I'm using 
just the cream coloured cruel wool to do the couching. Another little centimetre along and a slightly bigger couching stitch because I'm on, on a thick part of the yarn. Like that. Occasionally, when I've been doing this for something more um, representational, so when I've done couching on the birds or the flowers, then maybe I wanted to lay the couching yarn diagonally. So the twist on this is going that way. So I would come up on that side of it, like that. And I'd lay my couching thread on the same way of the twist and it would sort of almost disappear if that's what I wanted. But at the moment, because I'm doing just the couching this down as a perimeter, I'm just going to keep going along straight across, straight across to the other side. And pulling it nice. It doesn't have to be tight. You just have to keep your stitches nice and evenly along. And as you can see, I'm moving the couching yarn. The, I'm moving my the one I'm applying just to the side, so I can see where that stitch comes up. So I can just give it a little bit of a space, and that helps me keep the the line straight. Lie that in. Move along. and go down again straight over and just make sure that your fibre you're couching is lying where you want it to be, where you want it to go. This is another good way of making a line on your embroidery. Sometimes I don't know whether to say embroidery or stitching. People seem to use stitching these days, but because I learned to embroider when I was a child, I find it's, I just think, well, it's all embroidery. All of it is. Whether you call it stitching, whether you call it slow stitching, it's all embroidery. And it's all using embroidery stitches. I think when people say slow stitching, it's, it's more about the process and being mindful. I feel I'm mindful about my <laughs> embroidery anyway. So whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. The main thing is to enjoy whatever it is you're doing. And I enjoy whatever it is. So I'm co I've come along to the corner and I'm going to take my couching thread up right on the corner and just go a little bit diagonal over that because I want my, I want my top thread to be lying on a nice right angle there, I think. And then I can turn the corner and come down there. And come up. I'm going to go in from the inside this time. Just, I don't know why, just the way I've done it. Just a little space between where I've come up and where I'm going down. And let that let my cruel wool take it now you can if you want your um, couching thread to be stranded floss or cotton abrode or wool whichever one whatever suits the stitching that you're doing I'm coming along about a centimeter or about I don't know like three-eighths of an inch I'm just moving that, I'm moving my couched thread, my lay, this is the laid thread, this is the couching thread. So the laid thread, I'm moving it to one side just so I can see and I can move over that couple of millimetres. 
to give the to give the couch thread space to be on the fabric. I'll move along on my line. And I'll leave a little bit of a wider space as I come to a thicker part of the yarn, but it doesn't matter. So now, now you've got two different ways to make a continuous line. There is the running stitch that then gets whipped that makes a continuous line. And now the couching. Now there are split stitches and stem stitches and I'll do them in a later, a later video. But it's nice to be able to draw a line with your fibre that's not necessarily just a running stitch. I was given this lovely piece of hand spun yarn. I've used it for something else. And this is just the leftover piece and it's so pretty. I love it. You can see every time I'm just moving the fibre, the, the laid thread gets moved to the side so I can see how far to move along. I move it back above the needle and move it to the side again so I can see how wide my couching stitch needs to be and then I put it back onto the line. I'm going to move so I can come up in that corner. And it's just a matter of holding your thread and holding your fabric. I'm going to just take that diagonally onto the corner so I can turn the corner. Make my stitch. Move my thread so I can see. Pull it back on the line. Can go that way. I can move, move that down. So if you've got a drawn line, you'll be able to see exactly. But make sure that your whatever you're couching down and that you leave room for it in your little stitch that's going over the top. And just be consistent if you're going to come up on the inside all the time or go diagonally at the back all the time just keep on doing whatever it is whichever way it is another thing is not to pull your little couching stitches too tight because you can because really they're they're just tacking really and it would be easy to pucker your fabric up so just make sure everything is always lying nice and flat and unpuckered so what to do at the beginning what what am i going to do here occasionally i actually if i'd had enough i'd have tied a little bow or a double knot and i'd have left it there as an actual thing but i think at the moment i'm just going to couch the ends down but you definitely could tie a little a little knot and leave it actually as a as a way of showing that's where you started and finished so i'm just going to secure those ends together with a couple of stitches over And then I will tie my thread in at the back. I'll show you how the back of that looks like. I'm just going to snip them. 
And those both pieces can go in my thread jar. So I've got my lovely border going around the denim and the colours on here are matching in quite nicely with the rest of the page. But on the back, can you see I've just got a little, sort of like a little running stitch going along on a bit of a diagonal. Well, as I said, it's not just yarn that can be couched, it can couch fabric. And it's not just a straight stitch that, that um, melts into the background either. So I've got this bit of raggy, raggy bit of dyed fabric, a bit of cheesecloth. Um, I could just as easily have used my ripped down piece of sheet, but I thought this was a good colour. And I've put four strands of stranded cotton in my needle and I'm just going to do another square because I wanted another border. So I'm going to do I'm going to do blanket stitch this time. So I've come up in the corner and we we'll get my piece of fabric and I'm going to make my blanket stitch over the top of the fabric. So if I take the first one like that lay my fabric in remember for blanket stitch the loop comes around the back of the needle but now not only am I catching the fabric down I'm just going to leave that end there a bit I think but my, because I'm using a thicker thread the, the couching stitches are going to be more obvious and I'm just going to come along on that line and I'm going to blanket stitch this fabric down. So this is quite a good couching stitch for a thicker piece of yarn or when you want it to be a bit more obvious. I'm going to twist my fabric as I go just because it suits me. I'm making quite wide stitches and actually sometimes I might want this to bunch up a bit to make a bit of texture. I like, I like things to be quite textural. So let's just see if I can do that. I'll put that around the back. And as I pull this in, I'm going to let it catch that fabric and just bunch it up a little bit. Do it again. I'm going to twist my fabric a little bit. Take my blanket stitch. And let it bunch the fabric and just see what effects you can create you could use a thinner piece of fabric a different piece of fabric use a thicker yarn or use a thinner one but to have a try of using the blanket stitch as the couching stitch instead of the little straight stitches I want to turn the corner already You'll be working the opposite way around to me, so I'm working as a left-handed person. I'll take that down there. I'm going to put one diagonal stitch in to go around the corner. And I'll go down, I'll go a bit smoothly down here so you can see the difference. I'm just going to pull that fabric, take my stitch. If you need a drawn line, you could always make sure that your needle is coming up on your line. And I'll make the stitches a bit more obvious as I go down here. I'm still just laying the fabric in and making my blanket stitches over the top of it. Not particularly making them close together, but I'm not measuring them or anything. Just twist my fabric a bit or maybe just crunch it up. So 
and then all of a sudden you've got something else that you can do with those stitches that just the variations of things that you can do once you've just got some basic embroidery stitches in your arsenal or in your workbox or your toolbox you can do all sorts I think I like it with the blanket stitches being more obvious than I did up there. But I'm not about to take anything out, I'll just carry on. I'll put a diagonal one in just to get the fabric round the corner. Yeah, I think I like the fabric laying a bit flatter with the with the blanket stitches being a bit more obvious. So I'm going to flatten my fabric out a bit now. And remember when you come to finish off a blanket stitch, you need to go down on the other side of the loop to catch the loop down. I'll come up inside that loop to start my new thread. And I'm turning the corner there, so I'll put one corner blanket stitch in. Remember around the back of your needle to catch the loop. You can see I'm just moving the fabric to one side so I can see where my stitch is. And then I'm going to lie everything back in and make the stitch, finish the stitch. And that's quite helpful if you want to make your stitches even. Of course you might not want to, you might want the long legs like we like I did last week with the, the blanket stitch that was more loose. That's up to you to do what is the best for your piece of work. I'm going to cut them now. And I'm just going to neaten them up and put my final stitch over the top. I'm going to hold all those ends in and put a diagonal stitch to the corner. And if there's anything left over that I'm not keen on, I'll just cut it off. And I'll finish myself there. So now that's couching done with two different stitches and two different fibres. One's a yarn and the couching, the laid thread is the yarn, the thick yarn, and the couching thread was cruel wool. And on this, the laid fibre is fabric and the couching thread has been blanket stitched. Now, I'm going to just put that away there and I'm going to get a thickish thread this is candle wicking. Okay, French knots are so lovely to make and they can vary in size, they can vary in thickness, all sorts. I'm going to show you how to make your French knots beautiful and then we'll explore how they can change. I've actually got two strands of this candle wicking thread in here, which is just like a soft, a soft cotton. I wanted it to be thicker to show you how to make your French knots first. And we'll do them in all different sizes and textures. They come up in the middle. I'm going to try and keep this right into the middle of the camera. A French knot needs to be knotted around the needle and pulled back through the fabric so you can do French knots with either one wrap round, two wraps round or three. Once you get more than three you're sort of going into bullion knot territory which is a long knot. So at the moment I'm going to do two which is the most normal. You put your thread around the needle twice away from you and keep a hold of this thread all the time. 
and then your needle is going to go back down into the fabric just beside where you've come out. Can you see where it's going? And the crucial bit is that you keep a hold of this piece of thread and the knot is right down on the fabric. You make the knot on the fabric and not up on the needle. The needle is just making the size of the knot with your thread but the knot is made right down here and as long as you keep hold of that and you have it down on the down on the fabric you can't make a wrong French knot. So if I pull that through and I keep hold of this all the time until I get nearly to the end and then I let go you have a perfect French knot. I'm going to come and do that again. I'll just come up and do another one alongside. I'm going to lie my needle in alongside and this if, if you're in a hoop it becomes even easier because you don't have to hold this. You don't have to hold your fabric while you're doing it but it's doable either way. You hold your needle alongside, go to go twice away from you around the needle and put your needle back into your fabric just a millimetre or so from where you came out and before you do anything else pull your knot and hold the working yarn make sure it's on the fabric before you pull your needle through. Keep a hold of this all the time. Don't let go, you'll get a sloppy French knot, which sometimes is what you want. Sometimes you want them to be loose. But if you want to make a perfect one, I've picked up some thread. If you want to make a perfect one, this is the way. And then don't let go of the working on until you're nearly through. And then let go and in it goes and they will be consistently beautiful so I'm going to do a few of these two wrap French knots I can just go once twice the needle goes down the thread gets pulled and held the needle goes down I'm still holding right until the end and then I let go wherever you want to do them. I'm going to fill in a little square here or a little rectangle here. So because I'm doing it in my hand and I'm trying to do it for the camera instead of putting my hand on the top I'm just going to do the, my wrap like that but it's still just two wraps around the needle and the needle back in. Pull your yarn or your thread so your knot is made at the fabric and then down you go. And let go at the end. Don't pull really tight because you won't get the eye of your needle through the knot. You just need to make, leave it snug. And if you start with a thicker thread, if you've got one, then you'll see how it's formed and the more you practice, the more you get more even at it. So you can also do a French knot with just one wrap. So if I do that, if I do one wrap, once round and back down I'll get a tinier looking knot and in this way if you were using this as a filling stitch you can make texture to be thinner or thicker hopefully you can see that that's a smaller knot I'll do another one just one wrap once round the needle and back down that's quite sloppy at the moment so I'm going to pull it so it's snugly round the needle and the knot is on the fabric. 
and they're smaller and I'm going to come up here and do a three wrap French knot once round the needle twice round the needle three times round the needle you can see I've got three three wraps on the needle as you can see if I pull that down there I'd be making a very loose knot but I'm not I'm going to just pull that until it's really nice and tidy and then the needle goes through holding on right till the last minute and then off it goes and you can see the difference in size there between the one wrap the three wrap and the two wrap so I thought this would be really good practice of French knots and I'm actually going to do quite a lot so once twice three times the needle goes back to where it almost came out the thread gets pulled snugly at the fabric and down your needle goes and there they are they're such a good a good stitch to learn once twice three you can see the three wraps on my needle hold on till the last minute and there it is I'll try and do a right handed one for all you righties out there I'm still doing three wraps at the moment. I'll come up and see if I can. I'm not sure if I can do it. So once, twice, three times. There are the three wraps on the needle. The needle goes down just alongside. I hold on with my thumb, pull my needle through. I can't even grip the needle when I'm right handed. Grip the needle, pull your thread through, let go right at the end. I'm going to use this whole thread to make French knots. I'm going to carry on making three wrap ones I think. Because I would like this to be quite textural. But these would be good if you wanted to embroider flowers they're good for stamens they're good for the middles of flowers they're just a good it's just a good all-round stitch Well, I've come back and things have changed more than I thought. Um, originally, I was going to just put a rectangle of French knots here and you can see what a lovely texture they've made there. Um, these are the sort of things I would say if you were doing them in shades of green or a variegated green would make a lovely mossy texture. They're very, you just want to feel them because they're just so lovely. And as I was filling in my little rectangle, I started to think of them as bubbles and as soon as I thought of them as bubbles I felt as if they wanted to escape and so I, I started to fill in less and I started to put the bubbles coming outwards and then they didn't seem to want to stay in there so they've actually come right the way across and so you can do that if you like, or you can just put your beautiful rectangle in, or fill in this end, or just practice some French knots in whichever way. But I'm finishing off just by doing these single wraps. So all of these are three wrap French knots here. And then we graduate to twos and then singles. 
So for the last time, a single wrap is once round the needle. Back in a tiny little bit away from where you came out. Hold on to the working thread with your thumb and pull the needle down. Pull the needle down, keep a hold all the time until you let go right at the last minute to get your beautiful French knot. I'm just going to put a few more in here because I've gone a bit crazy but sometimes your stitched piece just tells you where it wants to go and mine absolutely told me it needed to escape the confines of the rectangle and become bubbles and so that's what it's done. Well, I think that's going to be me done for this week. That was most unexpected. When I started to stitch this week's rectangle, I wasn't expecting that to happen. So we've got couched yarn, couched fabric, but the couching stitch this time's blanket stitch, and French knots done with three wraps and two wraps and one and I quite like that I hope you enjoyed that and the main thing is just however you want to do it whether you want to do that type of thing or just do your rectangle in the middle or fill in whichever part you want or a circle I nearly did a circle actually which would have also been lovely uh, just if you can practice French knots the more you do, the more you'll get even and you'll get to know just how tight to pull that thread. But always make sure you're making the knot down at the fabric and keep a hold of it till the very last second before you pull your thread through. Before I finish um, with this, I just thought I'd show you how different things can be using the same stitches. So here, i just move that. Here I have a piece that I'm just finishing up working on. Um, it's mainly got running stitches going through or various different uh, directions. I've got cross stitches in various places. And here are the exact same French knots. That's a two wrap French knot and it's been done in a cotton abroader. And there again French knots here, just made in a nice line, just two wraps. And so you can put things together in totally different ways as you want, but you need to know how to make the stitches in the first place. This is actually a laundry button, those old fashioned fabric buttons that you used to see on old pillowcases. I just pinked them up. Anyway, that's all for this week on that. I'll leave you with this week's little piece of stitching. Well, that was unexpected, wasn't it? I didn't expect to be doing little bubbles escaping on my piece of stitchery but sometimes you just have to go with what your fabric and your thread is telling you to do and for me that's what happened. So I can't believe I've actually finished, I've, I've actually finished a page. So that's the first page of my book. So next week will be the second one and I'm not going to be quartering the fabric going to be a bit more free form. I've been knowing for a while what I was doing on here and we'll be using all of these stitches and, and one or two more to create something more artistic. Well I will be anyway. I know it's a few who want to follow along. Uh, I hope you get inspired to do the same. And so the, once that's folded, because that's the way it'll be in the end, is that a fold in and obviously the pages will be will be sewn together and so the page will look like that with the next one coming out. I think that's going to work really well. I always I already feel that that's going to be it's quite a big book, but it's going to it's, it gives scope for doing things. I also worked out if I was doing four weekly, did that take up the whole year? And it finishes just enough ahead to be able to use the end of the year to actually make a cover 
and put the whole thing together. So I think that's worked out quite nicely. So I think for four weeks and 12 pages, it, it ends sort of November, I think. And as I say, those last few weeks will be putting the book together and making a cover for the front and the back. So I think, it's, I think it'll have worked out fine. As you might be able to see here, I don't know, I've actually, I've actually started doing the knitting. I'm hoping that I'll have the knitting video ready to go on Sunday. I might not. If I don't, it'll be a stitching video, probably. <laughs> but um, whether I have the knitting done ready or not, because it, I feel I need to make a couple of samples so I can show you what I'm trying to show you. So I hope that's going to work out. And I hope you're looking forward to that because it's a bit it's been a bit different so far to try and film the knitting. It seems different from filming the stitching. So it's taken me a little while to get the hang of filming the knitting bit. So so I can show you the correct piece that you need to see. However, I'll just keep going and see what happens. Um, thank you for all your comments and thank you everybody who's sending me super thanks. I really really appreciate it. I forgot to say in the video last week that I do really appreciate anybody who, who presses the super thanks and sends me something because um, at the moment I still don't really uh, earn very much and I keep the adverts from out of the middle of my videos on purpose because I don't want you to be disturbed while you're watching them by a video coming in the middle and so that's a conscious choice by me not to do that so as I say thank you very much and I appreciate it all of you and I appreciate all of you just for watching subscribing and also I, I am creeping towards the 10,000 which is unbelievable really because I didn't even know what subscribers meant when I started and the channel's only been going since June and I wasn't on any social media no Facebook no Instagram no nothing I didn't know anybody so the fact that it's nearly at 10,000 people from nothing is quite amazing and I've got an inkling of something quite special to celebrate the 10,000 when it comes think it's going to be very long so um, I hope you keep keep checking in on me because um, you don't want to miss the special thing that might might be going on for when I reach 10,000 just as I say I don't think it's going to be very long so thank you everyone for watching and thank you for sending me the comments which I read all of them and I reply to the ones I can manage to reply to and thanks for watching and doing the like and i hope you just watch another video um that i put up at the end i've tried to take less things off the screen at the end now as well because it just looked too confusing to me so um i hope you just watch another video i'll put i'll put one in that i think is going to be interesting for you thanks a lot and i'll see you on sunday fingers crossed it'll be the knitting there's knitting needles here, so there's not much on it though. <laughs> not at the minute, anyway. Bye from Marion's world. See you next time.